Well, good day. Welcome back to the channel. Ballpoint pens, especially inexpensive, cheap, disposable ballpoint pens, there's no brand more typical or symbolic of the whole class of pens than the Bic pen. And I've enjoyed using Bic pens over the years. They're inexpensive and they work well, which you probably know because I've talked about them before. Last week, I was with my friend Ethan, and he said, Joe, I have a Bic pen that you can't buy in the United States. Yes, the Bic M10. Let's talk about it and compare it. Stay tuned. Let me be a little more precise. You can buy these M10s in the United States, but they're not marketed or sold directly by BIC. They're imported through various sellers. So I saw recently on Amazon $22 for a pack of 10. So they're $2.23 roughly a piece through that seller. They're not like 50 cent ballpoint pens. They're four times or more the price of what you might pay for, you know, one of the simple BIC crystal sticks here in the United States. Well, I keep this container of what I call junk pens for everybody in the house to borrow so they won't borrow my good pens. And so I went through this uh, jar or this canister looking for a sampling of different kind of ballpoint pens to compare against the Bic M10. So I had a chance to use this M10 last week on some fairly nice paper. It was the heavier gauge laser printing paper that Ethan and I have been making our notebooks out of. And so uh, my initial experience comparing it against a Bic Crystal was, wow, it actually feels really smooth, smoother than a Bic Crystal. And I've always kind of liked the Bic Crystal for an inexpensive pen. So we're going to do a quick comparison here. Uh, so I have a Bic soft feel medium. It's kind of like a Bic click type of pen. I have a Bic round stick in purple ink from uh, Planet Fitness brand, right? Another Bic, this is the ultra round stick grip, uh, another variation on the round stick. Here is a, um, a, a black ink uh, Bic crystal without the cap. Here is a Zebra F301. That should be a pretty good pen, and this is in kind of a reddish ink. This is another Bic uh, round stick branded Roseville Pest Control. Um, here is a Pilot Easy Touch in medium, right? That should be a pretty good pen. Here is a Pilot G2 Mini in green, and of course my venerable medium Bic Crystal that I like to use in blue, and of course the M10. So let's take a look and see how these write, how the ink lays down, and what my impressions are of them. Well, here they are all laid out in the order that I did the tests on paper, and all of these are used pens, including my M10. Uh, Ethan has used this M10 for a while, so I think it's a fairly good comparison considering uh, the typical pen that you're going to pick up on your desk or whatever has been used. So what I'm doing here is I'm using some printer paper against a cardboard backing, so it's the same consistent paper and backing for all of the tests here. Okay, we'll start off with this. This Bic soft feel medium point black a Bic click style pen and it has only a so-so feel when I first started writing with it right here it was a little faint like you would expect a ballpoint that hasn't been used in a while and uh, it tends to need a little bit more pressure in order to feed well it just has kind of a heavier draggy feel on the ball so I would call this a eh, or so-so in feel okay Okay, the next pen was this Bic uh, round stick in purple ink, the Planet Fitness branded pen. So um, this was dried out. I had to do some scribbling on my cardboard to get it to be started. It hasn't been used in a long time. But once I got it working, it does write smoother than the medium point a bit click. This looks closer to a fine point. Uh, uh, and uh, yeah, it's not bad. It's smoother than the first one. Okay, the third one is another Bic round stick type. This is a medium point in black, and it feels very similar to number twos. I did have to start it on the cardboard to get it working again. It hasn't been uh, used in a long time. That's typical of these ballpoints, but not bad. It has a typical Bic feel to it, right? 
Okay, the next pen is this medium point black crystal pen. It looks like it's about half used up, and uh, it feels bad. Uh, this uh, pen is just not writing very good, and it's probably to do with when you put these pens without their cap in a canister, in a can or something, it probably damages the ball sitting on it, and so yeah, this is not a good pen, and this may be one of the arguments for getting a retractable pen simply because it protects the tip better. If I really start scratching on it, I can get something to happen, but not a very good one, so this is a bad pen. Okay, so let's get to the Zebra F301. This is a red ink pen, F301 BP, and it's uh, not really a good pen. A good, it's a fine point cartridge. Zebra has a good reputation for being uh, uh, nice writing uh, pens, but this one is not a good writing pen. You can see here it was scratchy, and if you press real light, it's erratic flow, and it just not very nice of a pen to write with, especially considering how many nicer pens now are out on the market, right? And also considering the Zebras are quite a bit more expensive than the cheap Bix. Okay, this right here is the another Bic, a round stick, branded as a Roseville Pest Control. And uh, it's okay. Um, it has a slightly scratchy feel. It's maybe about the same as two or three here. It's not too bad, but it's not the best, right? Okay, here is a Pilot Easy Touch in medium, right? Pilot Easy Touch in medium, black ink, and look at that. It doesn't really write very well. It was hard to start. It's about like the first one, maybe even a little worse. Uh, and it's a retractable pen, and it was stored in the canister retracted, so and, you know, there is some ink left in that cartridge, I can see. It's not like it's totally dried out, but this is just kind of one of these things where when you don't use a lot of these ballpoints, they just don't perform very well. Well, we get down to the uh, little Pilot G2 Mini in green, and it did start okay. It almost has a fine point rollerball feel to it, but it is a scratchy feel. I can feel uh, almost like the ball has some kind of a scratchiness to it, uh, and it runs out of ink. It, it, it doesn't write consistently, and yeah, not very good. It could be empty as far as I know. I can't really tell, but not a great experience. Okay, and then this is the one of the Bit Crystal medium point blue pins that I've been using for a long while now on my desk. And I would say it feels slightly better than these two up here, right? Uh, it's pretty consistent. You can press very lightly and it lays down a line. Not too bad of a pen. I've been happy with these as just your basic inexpensive pen. And now we come to the Bic M10, right? Well, the Bic M10, the first thing I notice is it really does feel smoother. The ball feels smoother than all the others that we've tested so far. It does have the properties of a ballpoint. You might have noticed when I first started writing on it, it was a little faint, and that's just because of the nature of the kind of ink. But it does write very much smoother than the other Bics that I've tried, which is interesting. And here's what I did down here, is I did a comparison between the M10 and my current crystal medium point, and using the same kind of pressure, just drawing a line, and what I noticed with my medium point crystal is it gets a globby ink on the tip of it. See that? It makes those big messy things when you start writing too much. And that's kind of one of the downfalls of this cartridge, even though it writes pretty well. But the M10, I haven't seen that problem with. It's just a very consistent writing pen, very smooth, considering it's a disposable pen. Well, in some sense, this was a ridiculous pen comparison. Nobody compares used pens. You don't know what one pen has seen and the other one hasn't. Like, the fact that this Zebra pen doesn't write very well, that's not indicative of the entire class of Zebra pens, of course. Well, that's true, but this is just a sampling of one pen from amongst a collection of junk pens, and this is, I think, a fair 
a representation of one sample of a number of different pens and how they fare up against a used BIC M10. You know, it reminds me of the old adage about if you want to buy a good car, what you need to do is go out and find that car as a rental and rent it for a day and drive it around. The reason why is every car seems really great when you drive it off the showroom floor, brand spanking new and smells like a new car. But what is it like after a year of hard use? Is it still a good car? And you don't only really, really know that until you go out and like rent a used car of the same model and then see how good it is. And that's kind of what this test is all about. Used pins, how do they really last down the road? A lot of times with pen reviews, you're going to see people comparing brand new pins out of the box, out of the package. That's a pretty good representation of how the pin's going to be when they're new, comparing a new pin against a new pin. But I'm really interested in how do used pins work. You know, pins that still have some ink in them, but they've been laying around maybe in a canister or whatever for a while. How do they fare up? Well, you know, for instance, the... Uh, more highly touted zebras, which I've had before, and your pilots and all that, uh, they have a good reputation, but, you know, a used pen is a used pen, and in this case, they may not be any more reliable than the cheaper pens. In any event, the BIC M10. These are not retail sold in the United States by BIC. Uh, you can get them, and Ethan got these, uh, but they're kind of expensive to import, right? These are a sealed pin. They're a retractable clicker, but they don't open up. And then there is a little clip here, and then a retract mechanism, which is a little bit different than a lot of other retract mechanisms I've seen with these other pens here. Uh, and then Ethan brought to my attention the history of this pen, coming from the mid-1950s originally. If you go up into the mid-1960s, there was the Fisher Space Pin, the AG7, and there is some remarkable similarities between the, that pin and this one in terms of the features and overall kind of design. The Fisher Pin is certainly made out of metal alloy and not all plastic, but the Fisher has a similar shaped body. It has the circular groove grip on the front part, and it has a retract button separate from the clicker itself. So if you look at a retractable BIC ballpoint like this soft fill medium BIC click, you can see typical of this genre is the click mechanism on the back. It's spring loaded like that and there's a certain point that you can press where it doesn't click but if you go beyond it it does click. Once the pin is extended the click mechanism is sort of loose. It's just free to float here. So you could kind of shake it back and forth and make it kind of make m noises and stuff like that. And then when you press it beyond the click, it retracts again into the body. So the M10 is different. So first of all, the M10 has a button that has a little bit more spring tension. You can't just easily push it. It's a clear plastic mechanism. And it has a linear feel to it. You push and push and push, and all of a sudden, this little plastic button extends out of the slot in the side of the body, and that's at the locked extended position. There's no actual sound of clicking it, and you'll notice the button stays in, and it doesn't rattle around. Now, to retract the pin, you simply squeeze the button and it extends back out. And again, it doesn't rattle. It doesn't have a kind of a pushy feel like the other pen, right? So in comparing these two, you might notice the clip on the BIC click is a little bit more of a practical clip. It has the little extension down here and it's a little more spring-loaded. You can put it over maybe a hard cardboard back of a notebook or something and you can also slip it in your shirt pocket. It'll hold it nicely. Um, the uh, M10 it's a little bit less practical, I would say. First of all, you can tell there's an opening, a gap in between the end of the clip. So it's going to slip off of something really thin. It's not going to actually hold it like a spring, uh, like the way the plastic clip here on the BIC click does, right? So in that regards, it's not as practical of a clip. But on the other hand, this might enable you to 
insert it into a shirt pocket and retrieve it without having to use your other hand to hold the pocket. It just slips in and out. It's not going to hold as well though. Uh, so the barrel of the pin in the front here about the front half or so where it tapers up to more of a cylindrical shape. There's these fine clear grooves that offers a grip. And you might notice the spring for the pin is not actually in the front. It's more in the body back here. The body does not come apart. And of course it says BIC right here. Uh, no other really identifying marks. This is a used pin as I indicated. So there's a little bit of wear on the clip here. but. Uh, it's a pretty nice little pin. Um, it's as far as the length goes, it is about the same length as the Bic Click in that sold in America. I do like it as far as inexpensive ballpoints. Well, I say inexpensive with a big huge asterisk because it's not really inexpensive for us Americans to buy. Well, just comparing these three types of Bics, these two being uh, available in the United States from Bic retail, and uh, so you have the uh, fixed. Uh, tip, non-retractable pins. I guess I should probably put in here the round stick also, maybe as a fourth variation. The round stick, the crystal, the click version, these three being available in the United States. And of all the ones I've tried of this, these three models, the writing experience, it is not as smooth of a tip as the M10 is. There is something going on with the quality of the tip here versus these. And this is both black and uh, blue and different colors I've tried and also fine tip versus medium tips. The M10 just seems to ride smoother and a more consistent flow. That said, uh, I like the click mechanism actually uh, for the uh, for the M10. I like it better than the uh, Bic click we find in the States, but I don't like the clip as much. It's not really that practical. Obviously this kind of a pin would be perhaps used in grade school by children in France perhaps and other countries outside of America. Uh, and I can see it could be a very practical, inexpensive, good writing instrument, but uh, it's unfortunate that we can't get these inexpensively in the States and we have to, you know, deal with these pins which are okay but not quite as good as this. Well, this is probably a good opportunity to mention that <clears throat> the French are also known not only for the Bic pen, but their love of fountain pens and their use of fountain pens in their primary educational system. Uh, here's an example of some uh, Clairefontaine Triumph uh, letter writing paper that I like to use for both fountain pens and actually for typing on. Uh, so the French have a long history of being paper makers. If you go back to um, the 18th century, for instance, in 1783, the Montgolfier brothers were a family of renowned paper makers in France, and they uh, built the first manned hot air balloon in uh, European culture that we know of. Uh, this is kind of interesting because this very week, the first week in October, we should be having the Albuquerque International Balloon Fiesta going on, but because of the COVID situation, we don't. So the history of hot air ballooning does have a little interest to us locally here in New Mexico. That being said, the French have a long history of being paper makers and making really nice papers. So I can appreciate how even an inexpensive Bic pen could be made to a little bit higher standard for the French market than it may be for the export market. And again, I wish I could get these uh, big M10s a uh, little bit less expensively than what you would have to pay to import them from an overseas seller. Uh, so, but in the meantime, we do have our nice fountain pens. We're we're sort of living in a, I would say, a fountain pen renaissance with all the uh, import pens available from Asia and Europe, and uh, more and more inks available than ever before. We're kind of living in a in a great age for fountain pens. So, yeah, we have our inexpensive pens, but we also have our nice fountain pens and some nice French paper to use them on. Well, this is Joe and uh, Bic pens. I still love them. I actually still like the medium point blue crystal pens. I like the idea that I have this little gauge here that tells me how much I've used the pen. This one, <clears throat> I have a little tag on the cap that says November 6th, 2018 is when I started this pen. It's about half used up. 
Go get your pens out, even if it's just a junky can of old pens. Run through them, test them, see which ones you like, and start writing or drawing with them. Be creative and be well. And until next time, have yourselves a great day. Bye-bye.